There is hope for the future. I am so happy that car manufacturers actually listened. It is not very commonplace for things like this to happen, but I'm glad the few that do still have a place in our hearts. So we're going to talk about a lot of the cars that I was excited for last year and catch up with where they're going and what has been confirmed and what is still yet to be confirmed. Now, if you haven't watched that video, don't worry. You can still just watch this one. You'll get the general gist. So the first car we'll talk about was a car featured in that video, which was the Toyota GR86. What has been officially confirmed is that they are upping the displacement. So it is now up to 2.4 liters, which means that it's going to be a tougher engine. It's going to take more of a beating, have more potential. That's something to be excited for. It also means that out of the box, it has more horsepower and a lot more torque, even more exciting. So the car can actually get a little bit off the jump. It's around 6 seconds, 0 to 60 now. The automatic is still 6.5. That's a bit too slow for an automatic, uh, in my opinion. I think the GR86 is enthusiast enough to move on to having a DCT. That may shoot up the automatic's price by a whole nother two grand, but I think it'd be worth it. If not a DCT, since I know Toyota's already working with like BMW anyways and is willing to work with German stuff, they could throw a ZF in it instead because whatever automatic they're using in this car is way, way too slow. It's really weird seeing an automatic be a whole half second slower than the manual variant. That's not me trying to say that I don't want people to buy manuals. I, it's more so me wanting the car to have more potential. So that way it can actually be even faster at its absolute best, especially if we're talking about people who want to build it for racing racing, where the reality is that autos are starting to become faster because robots just shift infinitely better than we do. What did make me proud of it though is for pricing, still very reasonable. This is still a very fantastic starter car whether you live in Japan, America, or in Europe. If you're someone who's looking for a very good sports car, a lot of potential without completely destroying your entire life savings, this is actually a decent worldwide performer. The next car we're going to talk about is one that you probably won't expect me to be excited for, but I am nonetheless very proud of. The Honda Civic 2022. Some car enthusiasts did not like its new design. In fact, a lot of my friends didn't, but I personally love it. Now, the previous generation Honda Civic, I'm not gonna lie, it looked weird. Uh, I didn't hate it. Uh, it definitely did not look like something in its lineage. It came completely out of nowhere, especially compared to the previous model. I like cars to stay true to their lineage and have logical progressions. I think this 2022 is actually a return to form. More importantly, it started a fantastic trend. It doesn't have fake vents. All the smooth bodywork that you see on it used to be a fake vent on the previous model. The Honda designers learned and they listened to our criticism. They said, you know what, if we're not going to put vents on it that actually work, it's just going to cause drag and instead let's just smooth the bodywork there and just have it be cheaper to also, it's also cheaper to do that too since you have to mold, make a whole bunch of plastic moldings and stuff. It's just the better decision. If they ever release a performance model for it, they could just release a different bumper for it. Kind of like a good example with Corvettes, the Z ZR1 has a different bumper than the Z06, which also has a different grill than the Stingray. You can just do that with any other car in the world. If, so, if the Type R were to still exist for this car, it probably will have a completely different front fascia so it can get more cooling. But for the average base model, I think being this clean is for the better. Because this is a really popular, sold, compact car. This is a car that if consumers like it, because non-car people determine what cars trends end up doing, whether car guys want to admit it or not, we have to follow them because that's where the money is. If the most popular compact car said, screw fake vents, we're going to be smooth, that's going to be a huge market statement, not just to non-car people, but to other car manufacturers that says, hey, we're going to start to push the trend back this way. And I, that's what really, really excites me because I would love to see a lot of the cars stop this massive grill nonsense where they actually make too big of a grill with too much airflow that they started blocking it off and it's now a fake grill and then they started putting fake vents and oh I want to be sporty you know I want that trend to really die off I want to just go back to clean nice simple exteriors modern and somewhat futuristic you know I don't like totally barren cars that lack curves the Civic new one curves in where it should curve in and curves out where it should curve out it's a fantastically designed car now the next car we're going to talk about is one that a lot a lot of people are excited for and are saving their money for. That is the new Nissan 400Z or Z prototype or whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm talking about, alright? So 
The new 400Z, I think it's a great, great car. So we know that it's going to use one of the Infinity engines, which I think is a great choice because Nissan and Infinity, duh, they're, you know, they're really related. They're basically parent-child companies. So it's not like Nissan's borrowing a completely out-of-house engine for the 400Z. Now, the one speculation thing that people say is the base model might use a 300 horsepower version with the more performance-oriented ones using the Red Sport 400 horsepower. I hope that's not true. The base model 370Z already has a lot more power than 300. It does not make sense for a base model 400Z to have less power than the outgoing model that, that it's replacing. It seems romantic to me for the base model to actually have 400 horsepower because it's going to be called the 400Z. You know, the Q60 Red Sport 400 horsepower engine, it's already there. Nissan already has access to it. It's already a mass produced platform. Throw that in the 400Z. Even if it means the price is going to be like, you know, 45 grand ish, that's a infinitely better price than where the Supra is sitting at, especially considering that the car still has a manual transmission available and is beautiful. I, I, if we're talking design to design, I love the rear of this car. I love the front of the car. Some people don't like the rectangle grille. I don't mind it. I think it looks great. The older Datsuns and the modern Fair Ladies, they both gave a lot of inspiration to this car, and this car blended all their designs together. It's a proper lineage. A lot of cars usually have a weird, I guess, moment in their lineage where it looks nothing like their predecessor, but I'm so proud of Nissan's Z lineup for not having that. It's one of the few cars where beginning to end, it's looked the way it's looked. The Corvette used to have a record for that until now the C8 came out, and now its body lines are totally different than any previous Corvette, because duh, it's went from front engine to mid engine, which brings us to the next car we're talking about, which is the C8 Z06. The C8 Z06, it has been delayed for a few years. In fact, Chevy is struggling with C8 production due to a lot of unpredictable things that's been happening, whether it's a GPU shortage, whether it was COVID, as well as a GM factory worker strike when, it, when the C8 first initially was supposed to go into production. The C8 has just been way behind its estimated production because of that. Now, I don't think that makes the C8 some collectible car. The reality is GM still spent several, several millions. If it, they actually spent a billion on the R&D of the C8 platform. They're gonna try to get that money back, and the easiest way to get that money back is make the C8 a really, really long generation. Since the first three years of it are gonna be slow, the reality is they're probably gonna keep the platform around for seven more years, if not even nine more years. It may be yet another C3 Corvette where it's gonna overstay its welcome, and I don't blame GM for wanting to do that because this car needs a lot of catching up when it comes to its production. Uh, there's no way a company's gonna spend that much money in R&D and have it be a seven-year generation like they did at the C7. This is gonna be one that's in the long haul. It's something we're gonna see for a while, so it's gonna be produced to high hell, and eventually they're gonna catch Catch up and it won't be super valuable and rare all right so even though it's slow right now give it 10 more years because they still might be making some of these 10 more years from now now on to the actual z06 model unfortunately we don't know much about it it's still kind of up in the works because it's been delayed we now know even less about it because what we did know about it is now still speculation what we do know that is confirmed is that it's still going to be a flat plane crankshaft we have seen a few prototype models running around we've heard them but more importantly we have seen that they're returning back to a center mounted exhaust design i think that's great i'm a fan of the center mounted quad exhaust it's been a thing for modern corvettes the c5 did it the c6 did it the c7 did it i think the c8 if it did it, I'd be perfectly fine with it. It looks very distinctly Corvette rear. So that's a good move for it. A quick honorable mention before we move on to the final car on this list. So the honorable mention is going to be the Ford Bronco. The reason I put an honorable mention, it's not really considered a car. It's more of a SUV slash. Now the Bronco, it's really a story of you win some and you lose some because Ford completely destroyed the Mustang nameplate by turning the mock lineage into a freaking SUV. And I've not forgiven them. I have seen tons of mock already, all driven by soccer moms, just like I predicted here in Atlanta, Georgia, because I live in a big city now. And they're not, they, it did not grow on me. Everyone's like, Oh, look better in person. No, it didn't. It's just as hideous, if not more hideous in person and extremely revolting. I don't care how fast it becomes or how much they try to advertise it. You know, two decades from now, I will be that six year old who's going to look back and be like, back in my day, the Mustang was still a muscle car for V8. Now it's a wagon hatchback SUV sedan lineup that they made into an entirely different brand. 
and I'm not even gonna be ashamed of it. You know, I, I finally sympathize with the current boomers who are 60 years old and already telling that to their kids and like, oh, back in my day, this cars and blah, blah, blah. I, I'm gonna be like that too. I mean, I'm gonna go from midlife crisis Corvette owner to, you know, really bitter 60 year old who reminisces in the days of when muscle cars and pony cars were still muscle and pony cars. The Bronco, however, you know, you know, back off the negative and back to the positive. Whoever designed the Bronco, that design team, give them a raise. Whoever designed a Mach E, give them a demotion and give all that stuff to the Bronco team because the Bronco team started seeing some of these in person, started hearing them, started seeing them, started everything about it. Great. Uh, some people still don't like it, but it definitely landed more on the mark than it did miss. In fact, I don't think it missed at all. It just, it just fell a little short in a few places, but I think over the next few years, it'll fix those problems because I, this, I can foresee this being an extremely popular SUV from Ford. I hope it succeeds. I hope more people buy it. And the final entry in this list is just a huge curveball and it's still confirmed, but also in speculation. It's confirmed that Mazda will be making a rear wheel drive platform. It is speculated on which cars they'll be putting on. One of the biggest cars they're speculating it for is the Mazda 6. Another one is the CX-5, which I think is an SUV. Now, they might even do both. Now, the Mazda 6 is becoming more and more proven. Like, it's closer to being real than, like, the CX-5. Or it's really, it, it's a high chance that we're gonna see a rear-wheel drive Mazda 6. That's a weird thing to be excited for, but I'm still glad that, you know, manufacturers are listening because those are cool. Anything that's rear-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive variants in general, I always think is cool. I think rear-wheel drive is best wheel drive. You know, freaking fight me. I, I personally just love the idea of having some fun and slipping and kicking out the rear. I think that gives cars a lot more personality, a lot more character, and a lot more turning through the corners. I just love the way rear-wheel drive feels through the corners. I love how it floats, handles, and just, and even in a straight line, the way it plays around a few, I'm fine with that. And in a world where it's starting to disappear, especially off of sedans, because, you know, with sports cars, a lot of them are still rear-wheel drive. That's not disappearing from them. But sedans being rear-wheel drive is starting to become less and less common. And it makes sense because most people who buy sedans are starting to use them as family cars. But there's just a little itch. A little itch that some people still want to scratch that says, hey, I want to take the family drifting. And that's what this Mazda 6 rear-wheel drive is. Basically just giving a giant middle finger to, it's like, yeah, we could be boring front-wheel drive. Yeah, we're probably going to still sell front wheel drive models, but if you want a really stupid rear wheel drive model where you can take the family drifting, yeah, we're here for you. And Mazda, I'm glad you're here for us. I'm glad you're doing this. This is such a dumb idea that I love it. And that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you had fun watching, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like this video, make sure to go check out my other videos. Other than that, see y'all next time. Bladed Angel out.